Hey, the thing you're forgetting to do when singing just so happens to be the thing that touches the listener first. It just so happens to be why fine instruments cost so much money. It just so happens to be why guitar players have so many of these and why guitars have all kinds of knobs and pickups and why guitar players need like a million pedals. And it just happens to be why the little drum and the bigger drum are made out of the same kind of wood with the same construction so when played together they sound like this. Enough! Okay, here's the point for singing. Timbre. Timbre. How do you spell that? T-I-M-B-R-E. Why isn't it timbre? What does it mean? It basically means tone. Then why don't you just say tone? Be because it means more than tone. It's the overall quality of an instrument how it begins a sound, how it ends a sound, whether it has vibrato for a singer or not. There's a lot of sort of, it's an umbrella term for a lot of aspects of the voice. And why is it so important for singing? It means everything to the listener because we humans glean a lot of information out of the tone or timbre or way that somebody is using their voice when they're speaking and when they're singing. We tend to be mindless about this when we're singing because we're so worried about hitting pitches that we're letting the timbre shift around and all the while it's sending messages out to our listener that we may not want to project. Messages like, I don't think I'm going to hit this note. Stuff like that. So the point here is that you need to ask for a very consistent timbre just like a fine instrument is built with a very consistent timbre throughout. Just like a guitar has all these strings so that the resonance of the instrument can remain the same. This is a, this note here is a, the next string is a fourth up, the next string is a fourth up, the next string is a fourth up, because every fourth there's going to be a change in timbre that would occur. So this way the instrument gets to resonate very evenly. And the same is true for singing. You don't hear a piano do this, four notes, You don't hear pianos doing that, but you do hear singers doing that. So what can we do about it? We've got to ask for the timbre to be the same. It's a changing throat position that creates consistency. So tendency is when we're nervous or insecure about hitting a pitch, we're going to lock our throats in position. We're going to send up too much air pressure, and that's going to change the timbre of our voice unintentionally. And that's the point that it's unintentionally changing the tone of our voice. What musicians sweat so, with such detail is making sure the tone of their instrument is appropriate for whatever they're playing. That's why guitar players have so many guitars and pedals. That's why keyboard players like a whole lot of different sounds. That's why an orchestra has all those instruments, because it creates an overall timbre that's going to be appropriate for the piece. We've got the entire orchestra right here at our disposal, and we fail to ask so often for a consistent, appropriate sound. Easiest way to do that is to first ask for something ridiculous so you know you're in the driver's seat. I don't like that timbre. I like this one. So if we just went... Uh, do something that's really recognizable, and then... Uh, Choosing any sound you want, just make sure that the three notes are exactly the same tone or timbre. And then the hardest, most elusive, most puzzling thing is yours, your timbre, your sound. And that's going to have a little swing room to it. So start out at the extremes with the ridiculous sounds and then wake, work your way back into the middle to your sound. Ah, making sure you don't modify the vowel 
Ah, 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 unintentionally. And that's my point. When these things occur unintentionally, they're still speaking to the listener and we're unaware of it. You should be aware of every aspect of the sound of your voice, which is the pitch, the timbre, the volume of it, and the duration or the rhythm of it. When you sit in the driver's seat like that, you demonstrate that you're in control, and then changes in timbre become really powerful emotional communicators. More than range, a little more than dynamics, timing is in there too, but timbre is what speaks to a listener first and invites them in. I highly recommend you practice by asking for a consistent timbre throughout whatever scale or pattern you're warming up to, and that'll really put you at the ready for when you're going to sing and make some choices about what kind of sounds you want. I'm Mark Baxter for VoiceLesson.com. Can't you see the possibility?